last video, we used Drishti import to convert a stack of two-dimensional TIFF images into a volumetric file that Drishti can understand. And here they are. And the next thing I'd like to show you is how to use a different part of Drishti, namely Drishti Paint, to render those volumetric files and do things like basic things like segmentation. So here's the uh, PBLNC header, and to open this, all I need to do is drag the little 1K header file into any one of these Drishti Paint windows. And once I do that, you can see Drishti starting to generate a histogram. It will also ask me if I want to subsample my volume, and that can be very handy when we don't have copious amounts of RAM, and my 2 gig video RAM is fine, but um, not unlimited. So I'm, I am going to subsample just uh, to 2. And it shows me then a fair, what at first glance is a fairly faint rendering of that uh, Mongolian dribble skull. And I can improve that by manipulating the transfer function over here on the right. So I want to focus on the somewhat more dense pixels and leave behind all of the, you know, the styrofoam cup and the plastic wrap and whatever it was that was scanned that's very, um, that's not very dense and focus on the bones and teeth. And there they are. A um, couple basic keyboard navigation shortcuts is B. The letter B gets rid of that, of these, of this box with anchor points. And this box, of course, is crucial by clicking on any of these anchor points and moving it. You can look inside of the volume, press B, and then that gives you a bit of a less obstructed view. And I can look right inside the brain case of this animal. I use the mouse wheel to, to zoom in and out. This little um, cross here represents where all of the 2D slices are located. So if I hit Control, right click, I can move to a different part and that you'll notice the cross here moves and s both on the 3D preview window and, and each one of these um, 2D slice windows. So I have a Z slice, a Y, and an X slice. So that's very, very useful. Okay, so um, let me get my bounding box back and I will rotate it with the left mouse button. I can shift, shift it around with the right mouse button and either left or right industry paint can move the the, um, the bounding box so I get my the whole skull back again. What I'd like to do now, I'll hit B to get rid of the box to make uh, to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing. What I would like to do now is segment out one of these jaws, right? So I get a nice unobstructed view of the ventral part of the basic cranium, or alternatively, a nice occlusal view of the jaws, which at the moment I can't do because these things are bound in together. So what I have to do now is basically tell Drishti Paint that parts of this skull should get one or another of these tags, these numbered colored swatches here. So I want to start by, let's just arbitrarily say that we're going to use tag 3. I'm going to click on 3, and when I do that, Note that in my segmentation parameter box, tag 3 is selected. If I click on 5, changes to 5, 9, 9, etc. So I'm going to go back to 3, hide my, se my segmentation parameter box. And what I want to do now is um, tell Drishti Paint that our jaw is going to have this tag 3. It's not a trivial exercise. So in order to do that as fast as possible, I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to left click and just drag the pointer across this jaw. And you see, that was an auto save that just flashed by the screen. You see this line containing my tag three that I've just told Drishti. Obviously, you could do that painstakingly for the whole lower jaw, but no one wants to do that, of course. There is an automated way to do that. And that's by using the F key. And this represents F for fill, right? It's going to fill all the attached pixels, all the continuous pixels, with this tag number three. The problem here, however, is that the jaw, because of the details of the CT scan, as you can see up here where the denry articulates with the squamosal, that's the jaw joint, that is touching. 
So if I just hit F right now, it's going to turn the whole skull tag 3. And I just want the draw to do that. So there are a couple ways to go about this problem. One way is to manipulate the transfer function even more. So if you're really lucky, that's a very thin bone, which it actually isn't in this case, but I'll just show you. If I move the transfer function on the lower end up a bit, you see a lot of the bone will dis disappear because it's very thin, it's not very dense, but that connection here in the jaw is still there. Right? So unfortunately I can't use that as a shortcut to tag the lower jaw um, 3. So what I have to do instead is tag the, the squamosal part of this articulation with some other tag, say number 1, and then remove that so that the two things aren't touching. Right? So in order to do that, what I'm going to try now is to get my um, my 2D slice close to this region where we get squamosal and dentary running into each other. So let's go to my, my Y slice, and I want to magnify this a little bit. I just clicked on that magnifying glass, and now I'm going to use the scroll... Uh, uh, sliders, and then the slider on the left side will let you flip through the different 2D images, right, in the Y dimension. And here is the point of contact, right there. So what I want to do, this is Denry, right, and then this here is squamosal on that side. And I want to color all of the squamosal tag 1, and I can do that by clicking on tag 1. And in this case, in the 2D, you don't have to hit shift, you just hold down the left mouse button and you can see there's a bit of a gap there. I'll zoom in a little more. And what I can do now is just hit T for tag. After making sure that one is clicked and I have some of this initial uh, left mouse applied tag and I hit T and you see it grew. It grew a little too much actually because it got all this density bit. So I want to get rid of that. So I hit R and what I need to do now is go to my segmentation parameter window, and by adjusting this lambda, you can do it with the other things as well, but I'm going to focus on lambda for now. And if I increase that to, say, 13, and I try again, click again in my Y box, I hit T for tag. There it's, it's a bit more picky, right? It didn't cross that barrier now. So I'll, I can do this slice by slice. So I'm just going to go, so I use the arrow key right there. You can also use the mouse wheel. I just use the, the arrow key to advance the slice. I'm going to hit T, I'm going to hit T again. And unfortunately, it's, it's, I need to make it less sensitive. So I just hit R to remove the tag. I'm going to increase the lambda by another notch. And let's, let's try this again. T for tag. Well, it worked. With lambda 14, I hit the right arrow key. Do the same thing. T for tag. Looks like it's working. T for tag. Yep. Right arrow key. T for tag. Right arrow key. And I'll just go through a bunch of these. And with any luck, yeah, no. So my left brain, I'll, I hit R to get rid of that. And maybe I can bounce it up one more. Let's, let's see if that's going to work. Yeah, okay. T for tag with lambda 15. I'm going to go through. Yeah, no. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to I'm going to come back to the video in a moment, and I'm going to the whole point here is to go through this the squamosal side of the jaw articulation, so that when I hit the when I go back to my jaw, that these tag number three, these blue colored tags, will spread throughout the jaw, but not cross that line where I'm just tagging the squamosal part right. Okay, I'll be back in a minute.